My name is Mary Ladke and I'm the Executive Director of Children's Book Bank. It started uh, in 2007. Uh, it was uh, the brainchild of a group of women who I think were really committed to um, trying to uh, address some inequalities as they related to um, access to literacy resources and to programming. And they turned to their own children's libraries as the the, the source uh, material, if you will, for, for the idea and thought, what if we uh, found people who had similar uh, collections of books that they no longer need but are in really great shape and what if we present them in a way that is inviting and uh, welcoming uh, and we uh, pair it with programming and we make it all free. So it's a really bold idea. Uh, I give them huge amounts of credit because it was a tireless uh, you know, uh, job to try and uh, bring it to fruition but they did and it just continued to grow and grow, and I've, I've uh, been here for about six years. Well, I'm so glad when I saw that as one of the questions, I was like, yay, that's a good question to ask, because it's one that we get uh, asked quite often. You know, why would I be interested in supporting a book bank if I uh, believe in libraries? And I think the answer there is that um, twofold. One, uh, we're in the same business, so to speak. We, we have common goals, the library and the book bank. We really uh, are committed to creating a love of reading and providing access to literacy materials. The only difference is that we are focused on uh, giving people the opportunity to create um, libraries at home. And the research says that if you have books in the home, you're actually likely to go and visit your uh, public library more often. So the two go together, and they're not they're not uh, they're not in uh, you know in contrast. They're actually we're actually on the same side. So I now said that you know, book bank users become library users. Well, I saw that question and I thought, what does it entail? But uh, seriously, uh, there is a, a, a less exciting and a more exciting part of being an executive director. Um, the, the less exciting part, but very essential, is um, the tasks that involve um, the management of uh, not-for-profit. So whether that's working with the board, or creating a budget, or um, uh, creating a fundraising plan, uh, uh, making sure that all your ducks are in order when it comes to you know uh, compliances with the government that sort of thing but the more um, satisfying and interesting work comes uh, working with the staff um, developing a, a sort of vision with them for where the um, organization should go and we're sitting in this new space and that's something that has been in progress as a um, goal for about two years so it's very satisfying part of my job to see that this has actually come to pass. I think it's about accessibility to a resource that um, not everybody has um, the opportunity to, to purchase new, um, either you know, economic constraints, or maybe they're new to the country and not sure how to navigate, uh, 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 you know, finding uh, ways to get resources. So the fact that we have a uh, completely barrier-free approach, there's no uh, signing in or signing up or returning of the materials, all of our programming is offered for free, I think provides a, a very um, important service to um, the community that we serve here in Regent Park and um, all those other communities who we provide, um, we provide books for. So I think it's accessibility uh, uh, that's, that's key to the mission of the, of the organization. Um, so 
uh, that's, uh, I think, one of the reasons I was attracted to becoming the executive director and my, my experiences as an English teacher and a, a you know, teacher educator was because of the simplicity of the model. And basically, um, what we ask is adults to come into the space with their ch children, um, spend time in the space, um, either take advantage of our Saturday story time, for example, we have wonderful volunteers who are knowledgeable about um, early literacy and about the reading materials offered here. They uh, are welcome to spend as much time as they like. And then each person, so that's a parent and the child, can choose a book to take home for free. Um, and please, we ask them, <laughs> don't return the book. Um, you know, of course, they can return it at a later time. But we really encourage the development of um, personal libraries at home. And that's it, and they can visit every day. Uh, they can come back as often as they like. There are no other requirements. Forced us into providing a lot of programming online, but normally, and it has just started up again, I think we had school groups um, this Monday, we have a, a story time for students program, meaning that teachers can sign up for a visit to the book bank. They um, can uh, have a story time for their students. The students get to browse our collection, spend time in the welcoming space, and all take a book home for free. So uh, pre-COVID, we normally hosted uh, over 750 school visits per year, and I'm hoping that that number will return. Um, we also do um, fun uh, literacy focused programming on um, PA days, um, March break, winter break, and then we have a summer reading program as well. Um, we also uh, have um, things that maybe people wouldn't associate with us, which is um, a youth employment program called Readers to Leaders, where we um, uh, hire two students from um, the neighborhood, the local neighborhood, to come and work. Um, we also um, participate in the summer student hiring program through the federal government. And we're really committed to ensuring that um, young people who, children who start reading here, have the opportunity to continue to be a part of um, the organization by volunteering or perhaps um, working here at some point. My name is Kathy and this is my daughter Lena. Um, we've heard about the book bank, I believe that's the name of the book, this is our first time here, but we've heard about the book bank through um, a virtual program that we're doing with the City of Toronto and we decided to stop by and have a look at the books because we've been reading our same books over and over again and my daughter wanted something different and I think I did too. So we decided to come and check it out and it's beautiful in here. There's so many books, so many options. The people are super friendly and it's just a lovely relaxing atmosphere. We've loved it so far. Yes, I live in Regent Park. I'm a five minute walk from here and it's so nice to have this because there isn't, well not that I'm aware of a library nearby, but this is a great place to just explore and have books and my nieces also live in the area so I'm definitely going to bring them here. We can have some story time. It's just great to have this in the community and I'm really excited that it's here and I'll be stopping by for sure again and I'm going to mention it to friends and family. My name is Roxanne Deans and I'm the director, it's a new title, so it's a director of communications, fundraising and events. Um, Regent Park for many years, um, for few generations has been considered a high priority neighborhood in Toronto and the Children's Book Bank's focus is on high priority neighborhoods so uh, we have been in Regent Park and Moss Park St. Jamestown Arena uh, for 14 years now um, and now we're at Daniel Spectrum right in the heart of Regent Park. Uh, when the pandemic uh, started, we really had to uh, think about how we approached our, our outreach, how we would connect with our families that we serve. So we uh, made a point of really expanding our reach to food banks and other social agencies that were uh, working with uh, families uh, who were struggling uh, more than normal. 
we also uh, shifted the way things we uh, the way we do things at our storefront because we couldn't have people inside we made a point of having curbside pickups uh, we also had an online uh, reservation request uh, program in place for a few months where people could email or reach out and request specific books and we would pack them up in bags and they could pick them up safely. We had window pickups so that we could, people could maintain social distancing and of course a lot of our outreach programs where we were able to um, extend our services and give books to like-minded agencies like uh, community organizations, early on centers, daycares that were still open, as well as places like food banks. We have uh, in the past looked for like-minded agencies, people who are supporting higher needs neighborhoods, as well as uh, people or organizations and agencies that serve families and children. So we've looked to them in the past and then with the pandemic, we've expanded that reach uh, beyond just the City of Toronto um, to the GTA. And then word spreads. So one early on, we'll talk to another early on center and they'll say, hey, we got some books for our programs. You might wanna reach out to the Children's Book Bank. Um, then we look for other agencies that might be struggling to support their families uh, and their programs and then we uh, make a call to them and, and offer our services to them. Word of mouth is a great way to reach people. We've been asked that question in the past if we're going to move into digital books, but one of the things that's wonderful about the, the Children's Book Bank is that our focus is on paper books and the experience that comes with uh, creating a relationship with a paper book. There is uh, an experience you can't have with something digital, the touching a book, smelling a book, even for babies, tasting a book, um, the colors that you get from a book, turning the page, that's all an experience that you can't get from a digital device. So we really celebrate that here at the Book Bank. Um, we also, but we also don't pretend that there isn't a digital world out there. So we are on social media and we share our experiences with books, um, experiences with authors, um, ideas, ways to engage our children in reading, spending time with them, best practices. All of those things we can uh, reach out to a broader audience on our social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. We also have a YouTube channel, so we get to share story time via, uh, on our YouTube channel, as well as um, sharing other people's story times and other um, information about authors and literary festivals and those sorts of things as well. So we, we engage in um, digital platforms, but our focus will always be the paper book. Um, that's a challenge that we uh, is ongoing for us. I mean, we certainly are trying to make sure that all of the families that come in and spend time with us here at the Children's Book Bank are represented. So uh, whether it's uh, languages and or uh, visually. Uh, so we've been able to expand our uh, um, books with people of color as well as the LGBTQ plus uh, community, women, um, different experiences, different cultural histories and uh, celebrations. But because our books come to us primarily through book donations, we don't often get to pick and choose what we get. So when they do, when the books do come in, we make a point of going through every single title, making sure that it fits with the families that are coming to visit us and also what the children want to read. Um, that's, you know, a lot of kids want to read things that we wouldn't necessarily pick for ourselves. Um, so we want to make sure that we have a, as broad a selection of books as possible. When we do get books of different languages in, we make sure that those are available to our families. We try to make sure that uh, they know that they're here for them. And when there's an opportunity for us to select books, either from a distributor or a publisher, because they have some surplus, and then we make sure that those are the books that we request first. 
Well, I would say that I think one of the, because we're newly here in the Daniel Spectrum, I, I, I personally would like to say that we're really happy to be in this space because already just in the past two weeks that we've been here and been open, finally been open to uh, the public to have people back in our space, we've already, half of the people that have come in have never heard about us. Um, they're being introduced to us for the first time. They're learning about what we do and they're already feeling welcomed. So uh, coming into Daniel Spectrum is allowing us to reach uh, a broader audience and more of the people that we really want to serve. So we're really excited about being here and I think um, it just shows what a community, the Regent Park community is and how uh, wonderful it is to have them in our space. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out all of our social media platforms. For more information, check out our website. Thank you.